when both the check engine light and the traction control light pop up on your dashboard at the same time, it's one of those moments that makes you say, okay, what just happened to my car? And honestly, that reaction is fair. Seeing both lights together usually means the car has found a problem serious enough that it wants to protect itself. And it does that by shutting down some stability features and sometimes even kicking the engine into limp mode. But here's the good news. This combo doesn't always mean something major is broken. Most of the time, the car is just reacting to a bad sensor or a small issue that triggers a chain reaction. And once you understand how these systems talk to each other, you can diagnose the problem a whole lot faster, even before plugging in a scanner. So today, we're breaking down exactly what this two-light warning really means, what usually causes it, what symptoms point to what part, and how you can track down the root cause in your driveway. Let's jump in. The check engine light is pretty much the car's way of saying, hey, something in the engine isn't running the way I want it to. It could be a simple airflow imbalance, a fuel mix issue, a sensor sending the wrong numbers, or a misfire. If that light is flashing instead of staying solid, that's when you back off the throttle right away. A flashing CEL means the engine is misfiring badly enough to potentially damage the catalytic converter. But when it's solid, the car is still drivable. It, it just needs attention soon. Now here's where a lot of people get confused. They'll see the check engine light come on, but at the same time, the traction control light pops up too. Usually labeled track, VSC, or the little car with a skid marks icon. That second light doesn't necessarily mean anything is wrong with the traction system itself. What's happening is that the engine and the traction system talk to each other constantly. And when the engine isn't running right, the stability systems shut themselves off automatically. Think of it like this. Traction control helps manage wheel spin by adjusting engine power. But if the engine computer says, I can't control power properly because something's wrong, the traction system says, all right, I'm out too. So both lights come on together. One of the most common reasons this happens, when especially on cars with 100,000 miles or more, is a failing oxygen sensor. The O2 sensor sits in the exhaust and measures how much oxygen is coming out of the engine. That lets the computer fine-tune the fuel mixture so the combustion is clean and efficient. When that sensor starts sending slow or inaccurate data, the engine computer has to guess how much fuel to use. And when it guesses wrong, the engine runs too rich or too lean. That's when you start noticing things like lousy fuel mileage, a rough idle hesitation when accelerating, or even that classic rotten egg smell because the catalytic converter is getting overloaded with unburned fuel. And of course, the check engine light kicks on. But here's the key. A bad O2 sensor doesn't just affect the engine. It also affects how the traction system controls power. So the traction system decides it's safer to turn itself off, and up pops the TCS or VSC light. Before we continue, if you're getting value from this breakdown, hit the like button, share the video, and subscribe to Auto VFix. It really helps the channel grow and lets me keep making more helpful diagnostics videos like this one. Now let's get into the rest of the possible causes because while the O2 sensor is super common, it's not the only thing that can trigger this double warning. The next big troublemaker is the mass airflow sensor, or MAF sensor. This sensor sits near your air filter and measures how much air is entering the engine. If it gets dirty or starts reading too high or too low, the engine computer won't know how much fuel to add. That triggers a check engine light, and once again, the traction system will shut itself off until the engine readings stabilize. Another thing that will absolutely cause both lights to appear is a misfire. If the CEL is flashing, that's almost always a misfire. It could be a bad ignition coil, a worn spark plug, or even a plug wire not making good contact. When a misfire happens, the engine shakes, loses power, and becomes unpredictable. And traction control can't work properly when the engine isn't responding cleanly. So the system throws the TCS light too. A loose gas cap is another one that catches a lot of people off guard. Many modern cars treat any issue in the EVAP system, even something as simple as the gas cap not fully tightened, as an emission leak. That triggers the check engine light, and in some models, the traction control light follows right behind it because the car enters a reduced power monitoring mode. Vacuum leaks are another sneaky one. 
A cracked or disconnected vacuum hose near the intake will cause the engine to run lean at idle. That sets off the CEL, and again, the traction system pulls back until the numbers stabilize. Even the EGR valve can join the party. A clogged EGR system, especially on higher mileage engines or diesel models, causes rough idle, hesitation, and wrong airflow readings. All things that confuse the stability system. So now you know what causes the lights. But what should you do when they come on? Start with how the engine feels. If the car is shaking, stumbling, or the check engine light is flashing, take your foot off the gas and get the car home or to a shop. You don't want to keep driving a severe misfire. If the engine feels mostly normal but sluggish, you're probably dealing with a sensor issue. In that case, the best first step is to scan for codes. Even a simple $30 scanner from the parts store will usually point you toward the right direction. Especially if you see codes like P0130 or P0167, oxygen sensor fault. P0300 or P0308, misfires. P0100 or P0104, MIF sensor issues. P0440 or P0457, EVAP leaks, including a loose gas cap. Once you have codes, diagnosing things becomes much easier. For example, if the scanner says the upstream O2 sensor is slow to switch, that's a clear sign the sensor is worn out. If the MAF readings are too high, pull it out and clean it with MAF cleaner. Never use brake cleaner or carb cleaner on a MAF sensor. And if you see random misfire codes, check your spark plugs and ignition coils. A single failing coil can cause both lights to appear. Now let's talk about the traction control side for a moment. The TCS system relies heavily on wheel speed sensors. These are located by the brake rotors, reading tooth rings to detect wheel movement. A damaged wheel speed sensor or a sensor covered in dirt or rust can absolutely trigger the traction light. But usually when a wheel speed sensor is the problem, you don't always get a check engine light, you just get the TCS or ABS light. That's your rule of thumb. Sell a plus side TCS together, sire engine problem affecting stability. TCS alone, dark wheel speed sensor or ABS issue. But here's where things get interesting. The traction system doesn't just look at the wheels. It also looks at engine torque, throttle position, and stability data. So, when the engine isn't running right, even if it's something as simple as the wrong fuel air mix, the traction system disables itself automatically. In some cars, the traction control module even reduces engine torque by cutting fuel or spark when it senses slip. But when the engine computer is already struggling, the traction system can't safely do that, so it shuts down altogether. That's why these two lights show up together so often. So what's the actual fix? You always fix the check engine light problem first, because when the engine is running properly again, the traction control light almost always disappears on its own. If the O2 sensor is bad, still replace it. If the MF sensor is dirty, clean it. If the gas cap is loose, tighten it. If the spark plugs or coils are worn, replace them. When you correct the root cause, the stability system comes back online automatically. In some cars, you might have to clear the code manually with a scanner or wait for several drive cycles, but once the engine readings normalize, traction control returns instantly. So the next time both of those lights pop up together, don't panic. Treat it like a message from the engine saying, fix me first and everything else will fall back into place. And if you want me to break down specific codes or symptoms you're seeing on your car, drop them in the comments. I read everything and reply as much as I can. Thanks for watching Auto V Fix. If this helped you understand what's going on under the hood, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.